with checks, perhaps there aren't that many intermediaries, but things have become a lot more complicated when you're looking at transactions with cards. So there are many different types of cards. And you perhaps, I don't know, maybe you got, you got more, uh, more payment systems than you used to have in the past that you've also got less in a way. Um, the, what is the logic of a card? A card allows you from your bank and your bank account to the store, the store with which you're trying to make a transaction. So instead of writing a check, I mean, the initial creation of this was instead of writing a check and giving it at the shop, you can give something that is recognized and understood by the shop uh, that will have the same function as giving them a check. Initially, the, the, the process of paying on a credit card was similar with the checks. You, you, you guys are too young, maybe. You ever, did you ever do a, a card transaction on a paper form? At the end of the month, or whatever it was. Or, you know, like every few days somebody would take all these, take all these slips of paper to the bank, and then the bank would check that this is appropriate and go through the same process as you would have with a check. The arrival of electronic communication systems allows this to happen faster, but you've got different types of cards and different functions within those cards. The key difference is between a debit card that links to an account and operates directly out of the balance of that account, meaning that if you got money, it'll pay, if you don't have money, it will automatically reject at that point. And a credit card, which has a preset balance, you can enter into transactions, and uh, then you settle this by invoice, depending on how you do it. Most of us have a, a, a monthly connection between some account and our credit card account, but the account that the money goes to. So, in the, I mean, usually the credit cards either uh, they will bill you, they will uh, bill you every month, so they spread out the payments, and then you have to pay some interest on that, or you can settle your entire balance at the end of the month without any without any interest. Uh, but the the thing is, uh, this is to facilitate you to kind of it, it's uh, the availability of credit that you get with a credit card and the ability to pay in the future, which is a service provided to you by the bank, not the shop. Because the shop could also give you the opportunity to pay with installments, which you could do with whatever forms of payment you have. You could go there and give them cash or money. Uh, but the facility, the credit facility offered by the bank is, the, between the bank and you, is not uh, done by the shop. The shop gets its money, try away. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you deal with the flow of information and the flow of money from one to the other. And this is where things now are getting a little bit more complicated. You need a facilitator because the bank, your individual bank, does not have the, commu the system that communicates with the shops. The bank will issue the act will offer you an account will offer you a card that goes with this account perhaps the bank will offer an equal account and the machine to actually do the transactions to the shop but each individual bank cannot have its own system of communication this used to happen in the past when you had very few banks that did this type of transaction and you know everybody had American Express and so on because it was the bank that provided you with a card, provided the account to the shop, provided the machine to the shop and dealt with the whole transaction from one end to the other. But now you've got too many banks in too many places so you need a facilitating infrastructure. The facilitating infrastructure is offered by... Uh, MasterCard uh, Visa. or Visa or American Express, there aren't that many, right? Yeah. So you've got Amex, you've got Visa, you've got MasterCard. MasterCard. But the, 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 the ones that now we're familiar with in our everyday activity are those. So what do these guys do? These guys, each with the banks, 
provide the communication system. So you are the customer, you got your bank card from your bank that is participant in this network. The merchant got their bank account and their payment facilities from their own bank that is also participant in this network. And, and because everybody participates in this network, the transaction can communicate the information, the money can pass from one to the other. However, you, got, you now have a problem because you've got a series of people in between. You remember for the checks, the banks were communicating with each other. So to build a system that says you deal with, you deal with checks in that fashion, which deals with issues of delay, perhaps concerns about insolvency of one of the parties and so on, then you only had the customers and the two banks involved in the business. Now you've got plenty. You've got the customer, you've got the store, you've got two different banks, and you've got the facilitator in the middle. What happens if solvency event or a liquidity problem within this chain? The thing is, you cannot have, the system cannot operate if there is a risk of uh, disruption. What you need with, with cards that you did not have with checks is the immediate, you did not have with checks is the immediacy of the settlement. So systems have been created that allow the instantaneous transaction and somebody needs to bear the risk of that transaction not completing. That, that risk cannot be at the end. It cannot be the customer or the, or the store that bears the risk of a breakdown in the chain. So the risk is held by the facilitator. Okay, and that's why, so in, in situations where you have a central clearinghouse that assumes the risk of failure at some of the component parts of the system, and that's why there's a cost in using these services. Okay? Because the, the, this the, is only for payment. The stock markets, yeah. It's only for payment. The stock markets, yeah. But the, this is an important function, that, and also it allows for the, the development of uh, communications and electronic systems, allows for the instantaneous uh, connection. Mm -hmm. And also the systems that buy something now that I was in Athens, I went to the supermarket, I put a basket full of stuff. Right? I put in the, put the card, put the pin number, wrong. I must have passed it wrong. I put the pin number again, wrong again, I'm thinking. Yet, then I realized I changed card. Right, so I had, you had a new pin number. Now I'm thinking, okay, I'm not gonna do this the third time because it, if I get it wrong again, I'm screwed. So I pay with cash, I have just enough. Okay, otherwise I will start throwing stuff out of the basket. Um, I go then to another shop. I'm thinking, okay, let's try the card because now it's a different machine. I'm gonna get another three attempts, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna get another three attempts, I'm gonna figure it out. Put the card in, it says you're on your last attempt for your PIN number. So you see how responsive the systems are? Not only it communicates in real time with the bank, because this was a debit card. So it communicates in real time with the bank to uh, authorize the balance. But it also communicates security functions that are involved with the PIN numbers and things like this. So luckily, I got it right, so now I've got another three attempts to get it wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, you, if you're talking about compatibility of systems, then yes. I mean, they, they're all made to work together. Yeah. But the thing is that this is too big a task and too spread products, providers, jurisdictions, so it needed a central facilitator that is independent of all of this. So that's why you got MasterCard and Visa as the, the predominant standards that provide the service. But of course, there's a cost to the service. Yeah, yeah. And what I was trying to demonstrate is that the cost is not only the cost of maintaining the infrastructure, it's, it's that the cost is not only the cost of maintaining the infrastructure, it's also risk. A risk of failures in certain parts of the system and a risk that the bank has Insurance. communicated the money yeah, uh, to the shop and then they realized that you didn't have the money in your account or there's some failure or some cost. You know, you have your credit card. Right? Your credit card has a certain limit. You need to settle that balance. If you don't settle that balance, you owe money to the bank and the bank might suffer a loss. 
This is usually the reason why there's a, there's a fee in using the credit card, both in either in terms of an annual fee or in terms of the in interest that they charge if you select to pay with uh, installments, because that is a reflection of the risk of default. Mm -hmm. uh, but the improvement in the systems uh, means that these now operate electronic transactions, operate in an instantaneous fashion. It is being in improved at the request of the regulator. Because one thing is the technology, and the other thing is the desire of the bank. What happens if the transaction is not instantaneous? What happens is the, 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 yeah, the bank holds your money. Okay? And while the bank holds your money, it can do stuff with your money. This money doesn't just kind of sit there, it is an available balance. So when the bank takes five days to cash in a check, it doesn't mean that bank A is waiting for bank B for five days to send the check. That means he, uh, he got the money and just sitting on it. Yeah? So with electronic transactions, if, they, if, there were a few, if there were a few days to clear, the bank would be holding on to that money. So effectively, it provides liquidity to a bank as the bank delays the transaction. Once the technology allowed the instantaneous transfer, then the regulator uh, obliges the banks to improve the speed of payments. And that's why up to a couple of years ago, when you were sending, sending payments through your online banking, they would appear next working day or a couple of days after. Now they appear immediately. But what I'm trying to demonstrate is that this is both an issue of infrastructure and te technological capability, but it's also a matter of uh, regulatory demand. Because the banks would be perfectly happy to hold on to money for two days. Actually, I'm quite shocked that um, I'm sending money from one account to the other. I log in, send it, log in to the other one, like five seconds after, and the money is already there. But, but, yes, on online banking, it happens immediately. But be aware of one thing, though. The speed of the transaction action doesn't mean that there are no additional checks or that the, tran the, or that the transaction is irreversible. The transaction, is ir well, the transaction is always reversible if an error is discovered in the system. Um, of course, you could always go and withdraw the money in cash. It doesn't mean that if the transaction is reversed, they're going to ask for it back. Imagine you've got seven pounds in your account. You check your online banking, it's seven thousand pounds. You don't have to actually no seven thousand they will you won't be able to withdraw it anymore. Anyway. It is a seven you run to the ATM and withdraw it. So now you've got seventy pounds in the pocket that you can spend. If the transaction is cancelled because somebody sent you money in the error and they ask for it back, the bank is gonna ask for it back, but in the meantime you've got the money in your pocket. If the bank reverses the transaction, then it will disappear from your account. So again, it's a play between available banks and liquidity and time and all of that stuff. You need to be careful with your banks to be checking on your online banking the available balance. Because headline balance, this is when I kind of make mistakes as well, headline balance is the money that you should have in your account. Have in your account. Headline balance will not include transactions that you made five seconds ago in a shop, even though you go into PC World, you walk out with a new PlayStation, and it will not yet show on your bank account, even though they've been paid. This ensures they've been paid, but it doesn't show on the headline figure, it will show on your available balance, because pending transactions will remove from your available balance. Also, a check paid will appear immediately on your headline figure, but it will not feature the available balance until the check has cleared. So what you're always interested in is what it says as available balance. It might include any overdraft that you have agreed with the bank. But you need to be careful with this not to be caught out. Because I, I've, I've been caught out by this a couple of times. Uh, so I make, I make a payment, and I was thinking that... Uh, I was thinking that uh, I just looked at what it said at the top, okay? I make a payment for 500 pounds. I get a text message from the bank within five minutes, it says your 
480 pounds withdrawn. And it says if you don't bring it to zero at the end of the day, then there's a charge for you using a, a, an overdraft. Because it just said 500, it, it said 500, it, it said like more than that. It's like, what the hell happened? Uh, what happened is that I was looking at the headlight thinking about the available balance. So the available balance was very little, right? Because it was a, a check waiting. So the you need to think about the security, the speed of the transactions, the security of outcome for the shop and the customer, but also how the various bits within the system deal with it. What this means for you as you are available money, non available This means for you as you are available money, non available money about the reversibility of certain transactions, but also what it means about risks of default within the system and where, uh, where something happens. Also, for those of you interested in data security and, um, and kind of IT, IT issues, there are, there are concerns here now with uh, the stability in terms of IT security because if there's a failure here, then the whole thing falls apart. And you have it often, right? That lately you've had, um, yes, a bank having problems. So suddenly, so anybody who holds machines or cards associated with this particular bank, they're having the transactions declined because this does not respond in the system. Or even worse, you can have a failure here. If you have a failure here, it would be a worldwide stopover for that particular facilitator. But of course, facilitator. But of course, the the facilitators are more robust um, than the actual banks. But these are complex processes with many bits and bobs, and as it goes with complex processes, they tend to fail, and the higher the usage and the higher the complexity, you have issues. I mean, I was discussing with some gentleman who works for this. He actually works for the IT systems that support these, that facilitate those transactions, and he told me it, it's a it's a horrid, you know what? It is, it is always going to be a horrid mess because you have the incorporation of new technologies and new systems and upon so all the ones. Yeah. So this is ongoing. So you cannot have a state-of-the-art system that, that covers the entire chain. Somebody's working on older stuff, somebody's working with newer stuff because the newer stuff is coming in. Stuff, somebody's working with newer stuff because the newer stuff is coming incrementally. So the system is always inherently unstable because it incorporates these different things that are not necessarily very compatible with each other. The, the thing is, and the job of the regulator in, in involvement in this is to making sure that overall the system can withstand stress and doesn't totally fail. Totally fail. So you will have the occasional bank that from one time to the next is not going to work properly. Uh, advice to you know retail customers is to have accounts with more than one bank so you've got like an alternate card that you can use if in need. Okay? Or to carry some cash around. It's less fun when you get mugged. Uh, the job of everybody is to ensure that the, any failures are not long-lasting. So a bank can suffer a failure for a day or two or their own online banking not working. It's unpleasant. The bank might be obligated to compensate people who suffer losses because if they cannot fulfill the customer's mandate due to an IT problem, that's their problem. Yeah? So people who could not make transactions, lost deposits for houses, you know, lost uh, payments, they had to suffer charges and penalties for missed payments, they get compensated by the bank. But the systemic failure across the system, which means that the facilitator has gone down, this is more severe. And that's why it doesn't really happen. Now, uh, and, and that's why it doesn't really happen. Now, uh, and also the, the expression of this in the law is that you got stuff like the, the, financial, uh, the settlement finality directive, which deals exactly with these mechanisms. So the mechanisms of ensuring that the end of the chain is protected in this um, final thing that we can talk about. Ah, and now we've got other types of uh, payment facilitators as well. Things like Apple Pay, uh, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, and then all of these things, uh, PayPal. Uh, now, these offer similar services with your traditional bank services, but they don't operate on the basis of a card. 
in the traditional sense. Right? But now again, you could argue that it's the same as Descartes because the technology now turns your turns your electronic device into a bank card by having the ability to communicate. Uh, it's just that your facilitator in that case is not a uh, Visa or MasterCard, but it's Apple. So this is, again, the infrastructure. So when you had MasterCard at the top of the building before, now you've got Apple Pay or PayPal. The process is the same, and the regulation and functioning ought to be the same. In a way, I've been told that using your, uh, if you've got the NFC on your phone, so you can use your phone for contactless transactions, it's actually more secure than using the bank card because that is a representation of your card on the phone, meaning that that cannot be replicated. So if I steal the information from your card, I can make a dummy card with this information, but I cannot make a dummy card out of the 